Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan, just about to knock loads of stuff off of his shelves. Because today we're going to be taking a look at the Merc 310 Speedster Black Edition. There's loads and loads of names on this. I don't know why they end up giving it so many names. Why can't they just call it the Merc? Anyway, or the Mercury, because I've just seen on the back it's actually called the Mercury. How, who are you? Apparently I didn't. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be taking a look at the Merc. Now it is the XFX RX 7900 XTX Merc 310 Black Edition. But I am still here. Anyway. Now, uh, I did review the two main cards yesterday, which is the XT and the XTX. And these are the OEM cards from AMD. I tested this through the main system, but then I also put these through a 7900X CPU powered system with the 4080 as well, so that we could do some CPU comparisons. Both those reviews are live on the channel and on the website, if you would like to go and take a look and uh, kind of absorb some more information about what's going on. Now the XFX, I'm going to say straight from the get-go, I still haven't been given a price, which makes a reviewer's life quite difficult. So what I'm going to say is straight from the off, because I do not know about price, is that if the prices of the 7900 XTXs creep over about 1200 maybe 1250 pounds because let's remember the uh amd baseline price for these is going to be um uh 999 pound and i have already heard some retailers saying that there's three percent margin for profit with them in on that that some of them are going to be pushing the price up to a thousand and fifty anyway so if these go over 12 this card goes over 1250 pounds then it's going to be a very, it's going to be something you're going to have to seriously think about when in comparison to the 4080. Now, I know there's so much hatred for the 4080, and I am completely with you on that, 100%. The, it, the naming, the pricing, the whole lot was just a big shambles. But the sweet spot for the AMD cards is going to be the aggressiveness of the price when in comparison to the 4080. So... Uh, basically, we need to just get busy with the card. Now, it does have three power headers on it. Thankfully, no 12V8s, PWR cable or anything on there. Just three good, sturdy, 8-pin PCI power cables on there. Nice and easy, lovely, lovely. You do get four connectors around the back. It's three display ports and a single HDMI. But the biggest thing about this card is the fact it's so big. It's 340 millimeters long, but with that extra bracket, which comes in as an accessory within the box, I would say, based on uh, when I fitted it without it, make sure you use it, unless you can support it from underneath, that is. But if you use the bracket, that takes the uh, total length to 370 millimeters. So we're well beyond the worries a 4090 sizing, this thing is a behemoth when you add that in. I love the design of the front of the card with the three fans and that black does look like it can be dismantled, probably quite easily painted if you fancy getting your hands dirty and sadly voiding warranty, but you, you get what I mean. Although the warranty tab is on the back of the card and not the front. Um, but I'm not sure what they'd feel like if you sent it back with a bright red uh, colour change. Now, the back plate, I don't like. I think they should have done something more with that. I don't like the fact it's silver either. But, you know, that's just a personal preference. Three big fans. The cooling works really well. Really well. It also isn't noisy. Now, a lot of people say, well, you should do sound tests. If you have a graphics card in a system like this, then normally... The rest of the system is noisier than the graphics card unless you really ramp the fans up. So it's actually quite difficult to be able to do it. Uh, which is why I don't bother, because I test in an actual case. How you would at home, how you would use it. When we do the thermal testing, the sides on and the um, fans in the case are actually set to 1200 RPM. So we do lots of stuff to try and make it relevant to you at home rather than just sticking it on a temp bench, which 99.99% of you are never going to do. 
Ah, so thermals, very good. Power usage, more than a 4090, which was a bit surprising. But effectively, what XFX have done is ramp the possible power that it can use up to increase performance. Now, when I say increase the performance, it does bring us nice and tidily into the fact that we can now start looking at graphs and games. Now, uh, the 3D Mark Time Spike Stream Graph, you can see here it actually won, but I wasn't very happy with the final result. And I went in and did a, f a little bit more tuning and I did manage to crack the 14,000 uh, threshold for 3D Mark Time Spike Stream which I was really happy about. But I just, I did that yesterday after the AMD reviews went live. And quite clearly I haven't got enough time to be able to run all the tests through again so that we can see what it goes like, but it is there. One thing I would say though, is if you are going to want to run an overclock like that, you are going to be running those fans. And in reality, I think for a full bore, constant overclock that you're gonna be running all the time and gaming in, I do think that's at the point where you're going to need to start looking at either hybrid cooling with an AIO or going dedicated water cooling. Um, I will say though, that it does come with a little BIOS switch. If you push it towards the power cables, then let me check. I'm sure it's the power cables. Uh, right. So if you push it towards the power cables, that's the secondary BIOS. That's where the unhinged full wattage craziness is if you have it pushed towards the IO that's the static position I did my testing with it in that bonkers section so that could also be why it used a little bit more power but it is also why we've probably done so well with the testing so games uh, it beat all of the times at the 4080 so with the 7900 XTX if that beat 4080 then the XFX does as well. But normally it beats the reference XTX as well. So it goes that little bit further. The average clocks were a little bit down compared to the reference uh, cards, but the performance was better, probably because of the increased power limit and the fact it could kind of boost itself that little bit more if it wanted to during games. So it won out every time that we would have expected to with the other cards. The only times it didn't win was the same time that the other cards didn't. And that was when we enabled ray tracing. So temperatures were very good. Power usage, not so good. But I don't think as a, a hardcore enthusiast looking to buy a thousand pound card, you're really going to be worried about it that much anyway. The only thing that you can say to keep balance is you obviously get an awful lot more performance out of a 4090 compared to this for the same power. So if you want to go all green and make sure that you are using your power efficiently, then the greens are where the money is still. But we need to remember that this is a slightly older, slightly larger process node, so it is going to use more power. Uh, as I said about pricing before, um, it's a very nice card, goes like an absolute steam train as far as the 7900 XTXs go, but pricing is critical because at a thousand pound, I would definitely say that you should buy an XTX over a 4080, uh, even if you're not, especially if you're not that fussed about um, things like ray tracing and DLSS. But once these cards cross a threshold of I'm going to say around 1200 to 1250 pounds because that's where the bulk of the Nvidia cards are at you can find some now cheaper than MSRP but I'm going to put it up at 1250 to keep things fair because they have obviously had to make the cooler and everything like that but once they push past that threshold I'm genuinely at the point where I'm not going to tell you to go and buy a 4080 but I'm going to say think long and hard about the games that you're going to be playing and would you benefit from, yes, you're going to get ray tracing, but when you turn DLSS on, because normally if you get one, you get the other, if you turn DLSS on, then you're going to get even more performance. And that is something you do have to think about. Yes, the 4080 was a shambles. But when you mix it in with all of this, we have to remember these are the products that are actually available and not the products that we want. Definitely not the products that we deserve. 
So it's going to be up to you to make your choices. I've given you lots of information. The XFX is an incredibly pretty card and I genuinely, I'm so grateful that I got it early. I've got you the testing done. I've brought you the data. It's now time for you and your wallet to go and have a conversation and see what can happen and what you want to do. Because at the moment, I don't know how much this wants to milk you. I'm hoping if it goes to the point where it's 1149 or 1199, then I'm going to say it's worth a punt. Any more than that, you do need to go and sit down, have a word with yourself and make some serious kind of choices and do some comparisons look at the games that you're playing and look at the data that I've brought you in the review and that's on the website. Because please remember, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not giving you any affiliate le links. I'm just here to try and help you make a decision. So hopefully I've managed to do that. If I have, then please remember to like, subscribe and uh, comment and all of that stuff. Go and follow me on socials because we're always up to something. Uh, and I do have some rather monumental news coming for you in the next couple of weeks. I'm beavering away late at night trying to get things sorted for you. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out. Ding! Love you, sis.